Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. morning welcome you all to the next lecture in this course on analytical spectral and microscopy applications of inorganic compounds and nanomaterials we have looked at a large number of uh, uh, techniques and just immediately previous we have looked at the mos bias spectroscopy prior to that we have looked at the xpa spectroscopy is somewhat very relevant in terms of the ionization process is concerned but the information that we obtain is altogether different and that is what we will look at uh, now in this class maybe in one more class as well this particular uh, technique on extended x-ray absorption fine structure uh, spectroscopy so also it's uh, uh, it has another component uh, the the x-ray absorption there is a near edge spectroscopy so both of these general called as x-ray absorption spectroscopy so we're going to look at uh, this common technique of x-ray absorption spectroscopy leading to exhausts or leading to xanes in fact a combination of both are used in most of the applications okay so what is this uh, expected to give this technique of x-ray absorption spectroscopy so x-ray absorption spectroscopy is expected to give with respect to let us say a metal ion and you have a, a ligands bound primary coordination then you may also have a secondary coordination so what you get from crystallography is the whole structure for starting from the central metal ion and the ligands etc here in this technique you will get basically the primary and to some extent secondary coordination with all the geometry uh, parameters but in the x-ray crystallography what you need require what you you require is the single crystal of the compound here in the exhausts or xanes you don't require any single crystal you can have a polycrystalline you can have a non crystalline you can have an amorphous you can have a solution phase any kind of a material can be used or gel like state any of these things so there is a great advantage of uh, this particular technique uh, over that particularly when you go to the when you have the small inorganic compounds you know that the accuracy by single crystal x-ray diffraction is extremely high the third decimal error so 0.001002 uh, angstrom as the is the standard deviation but if you take the same single crystal x-ray diffraction uh, with the biomolecule huge biomolecules then the accuracy goes to the 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 angstroms kind of things uh, so so they're depending upon the resolution the data that is collected whereas the exhausts and gains even in case of metalloproteins metalloenzymes huge biomolecules you don't require a single crystal in any form solution polycrystalline amorphous still can get 0 0.01 0 0.02 kind of a uh, variation in the angstrom of the uh, thing so there is a lot of advantages to that so what all you get as i said the from the central atom whatever is connected as a primary coordination and with a with a with a much resolution data today you can get even up to the second you know shell and that will create or generate or give you a model of the entire uh, metal species with its geometry so suppose you have a particular ligand three or four kinds of ligands are there or if you take in biology in metalloproteins you have a metal ion and three histidines or two aspartics etc so you can differentiate the nature of the atom and and the and the number of those such as uh, such uh, groups bound all of these can be identified from the exhausts and xanes so what what could be the uh, limitations limitations is there are certain things what you measure you will understand it is the absorption spectrum of the x-ray absorption spectrum like we have already studied earlier in the past uv visible absorption spectrum etc no here it is a x-ray absorption spectrum 
So, the X-ray absorption spectrum has got certain fine structures, certain near edge structures coming and those structures you are trying to resolve and this resolved one to be converted by Fourier transformation into the into the distance uh, format and that is where you require uh, the Fourier transformation and that part is also has some limitations and you need to fit this data with the known systems small suppose, suppose you have a metal of proteins then you can have a small molecular metal complexes and their structures should be known by single crystal x-ray diffraction. So, their exhaust data then you can use that exhaust data as the uh, model for fitting that one. So, those are the only the limitations, but now today large number of model complexes are known model complexes are nothing but small molecular inorganic complexes they are all known uh, both for metalloproteins, metalloenzymes, catalytic species, surfaces for all of them model species are already known. So, there should not be a difficult situation though that is the happens to be the uh, limitation ok. So, just uh, have a look at uh, this particular slide and as I have been talking about. So, I have given you the basic uh, what all one can obtain from this and this. So, how is this different from the uh, XPS? First of all, how do you get that X-ray absorption spectrum or Xenes X-ray absorption near edge spectrum etcetera these things. Same principle wise is the same initially you have a X radiation impinging on your sample and you know that the X radiation is sufficient enough of course, suitable to that particular metal ion can knock out one S electron. So, therefore, you have different kinds of X ray energies are being used this concept we have already learned in photoelectron spectroscopy and that electron which is knocked out will come out and as uh, and you measure the kinetic energy of that and that is what you use and finally, you find the binding energy of that. This you have, we have looked at in the photoelectron spectroscopy. We also looked at when you knock out one one else electron, the higher energy electron can drop into this. The energy that is created generated out of this dropping can knock out another electron and that is called Auger process and that also we have looked at in the past under the photoelectron spectroscopy. So, that is what is photoelectron spectroscopy. So, what you do? the photo electron spectroscopy you use the same x-ray absorb x-ray incident radiation, but you measure the characteristics or the speed or the kinetic energy of the electron that is coming out, but in exhafts it is not that way what you. So, you basically look at the exo absorption spectroscopy spectrum itself and I draw your attention to this particular slide on this uh, side is shown and this is the absorption edge that is coming over there. Uh, so, you can see and then there are some kind of ups and downs are going on and there is also in this absorption spectrum itself there are certain you know features also come into the region. How will you know? If you expand this you can see this particular region has got some little dips it is in etcetera etcetera all you have. So, and this particular region gives you the spectrum of the details from the absorption uh, x-ray absorption this is called the near edge spectroscopy Xenes and if you go little away something like 30 40 electron volts away because that is what the energy you are plotting. So, you can see some up and down and up and down etcetera dampening things. So, these are the kinds of things which are referred as the edges ok. You can also refer these are oscillations. So, you can measure these oscillations and these oscillations uh, embed a lot of information. What kind of information? Information of the nearest neighbors, nature of that nearest neighbor atom, number of such atoms, geometry in which they are there, maybe even the secondary shell atoms all of these. So, and if your electron is coming from the 1 s then it is a k type of a you know edge then otherwise l m etcetera higher ones. So, you can do exhausts or xanes for the k for the l for the m, but most often it is done with the k and occasionally some uh, most often it is done with the uh, k shell sometimes you can do the l and m uh, also. So, both the x xanes and exhausts. So, again I draw your attention to look at this particular table which is figure which is showing the two parts of the things ex, uh, the xanes region and exhausts region ok. So, this is not the kinetic energy that was measured in the photoelectron spectrum 
and this is the absorption spectrum edges that you are measuring. So, in the vicinity of the absorption spectrum, then you have some certain kinds of ups and downs that is what you are measuring. And why you are measuring? You are measuring that because that uh, contains the information of the nearest neighbors, number, nature, geometry, etc. How? We will see in the next few slides. We will understand how does that you know you possess this information. Okay? So, let us look at the basic uh, principle. What you are doing is you have a material, you have uh, let us say one particular kind of a, a atom center you are trying to probe. Let us say it could be a copper, it could be an iron, it could be a molybdenum, any of these. So, correspondingly, you will use the x ray energy. So, the x ray energy should be crossing the binding energy of the 1s, okay? that is what is important. So, when that is there, I draw your attention to this uh, slide uh, figure that we have. You assume this A and A is referring as a kind of a absorber absorbing atom uh, here and that absorbs the x radiation and ejects the electron out and this line the curve line is showing as if the, the electron is moving. So, the electron propagates out and as it propagates it keeps going in the direction out in all directions and it may come across the atoms which are neighboring atoms. So, which are neighboring atoms? The primary coordination atoms. So, with respect to a metal, the primary coordination atoms are the ones which are present in that. So, you have let us say you have a uh, molybdenum and let us say you have a thiol cysteine or something like that. So, for example, the electron that is coming out here uh, from here because you are using the corresponding x ray and this is removing the let us say one as electron, core electron and the electron is ejected is going in this way, then it uh, it hits that particular uh, atom that you have. Atom obviously has electron density, therefore, the electron electron repulsion, therefore, you have a scatter back. So, therefore, this uh, uh, so I need to use a different color for that. So, the, the lines, so this is scattered by this, so therefore, you are getting into that, so etc. So, you have the wave going in forward, then the scattered wave coming into the backward and therefore, you have uh, the overlap of these waves in, in uh, two different ways which is the constructive kind of a overlap and uh, a destructive kind of a overlap which uh, we know um, already uh, the uh, from the light from the XR, X ray all these things we know that. So, constructive and destructive interference uh, these are all interferences or overlaps I both are one and the same that will lead to this uh, kind of a thing you have etc etc. So, these uh, edges are coming. So, and they are dampening why dampening we will see just in a while why they are not having the same and they are dampening. Uh, so, because that means this is going as a distance wise the distance increasing uh, kind of thing. So, you have that uh, the scattered the overlap of the scattered back scattered wave with that of the forward going and then that can be constructively and you can see that and that will come the peak. So, this constructive one will give the peak part of it and uh, and the destructive one will give the trough part of it. So, the peak and troughs are, are, are obtained in these things because the constructive and destructive. So, have a look at this figure that you can see and these are the things. So, this is the destructive and then all these are overlap. So, this is what is basically referred as the fine structure of these uh, the modulations what you have uh, the, uh, the, uh, the scattered waves that you have in that. So, uh, so, then they may also sometimes you may have some other atom here, some other atom far away. So, primary is another primary or secondary all these atoms. So, therefore, you have the waves uh, uh, scattered by all of these and then that can lead to multiple scattering on the spectra. So, uh, I draw your attention to this particular uh, the figure here. So, A is the absorber, S1 is one other scatterer, S2 is another scatterer. So, you can have a wave going from A towards the S and then further this scatters and beyond and this will backscatter can go in this direction 
or it can go in this direction there are various ways all these depends upon the, the distance and the, the back scattering depends upon the, the distance nature of the atom whether it is a sulfur whether it is a uh, whether it is a carbon whether it is a oxygen atom distance nature number how many such number are there and of course the angle between them etc all of these all of these parameters all of these parameters are very important for studying the geometry of the primary coordination or even secondary coordination uh, sphere so you can have so if you say s 16 then you can have like this so this will be secondary atom not directly back, but still a certain kind of a level of distance is there so if these distances are 4 to 5 angstroms so you can one can consider this whole back scattering multiple scattering from various atoms so scattering from happening here scattering happening here and then maybe some other thing etc etc i will show you a little later stage with some more examples when you take up the histidine etc so i will show you those details but this back scattering what will happen is so that will make this absorber intensities diminish less compared to the what we have if you don't have such kind of a uh, scattering coming from the multiple uh, atoms of that so that is where you are you are seeing this dampening so as more and more secondary atoms interact with that or scatter with that then the lesser and lesser the intensity is so you go here go further go further so the distance so you have and then of course you cannot see much beyond that one so you have the absorber main that could be a copper that could be a molybdenum that could be a iron that could be a nickel that could be manganese therefore reason why we are mentioning the 1s energies are different therefore you use the x radiation which is sufficient enough to knock out that one but you are not measuring the kinetic energy but you are still measuring the absorption of the x radiation and then you are looking at these scattering uh, that are coming out oscillations so basically you can get a, an oscillation spectrum and then you require finally to convert into the distance based uh, spectrum so advantage i have already mentioned to you of course this back scattering uh, multiple scattering does not affect terribly a lot there is some effect is there much less and then you can again use this by using the model uh, studies uh, so there is no problem uh, because in the model studies the number of nearest neighbor atoms and second nearest neighbor atoms are all in control so therefore you can use them and then from that you can do the fitting for your uh, case okay so what is uh, in all measured I, though i mentioned just now you can see that so you have the central atom or you can call it as a absorbing atom so this is the atom which is absorbing the x radiation so this x radiation uh, is absorbed and then that will give away the let us say 1s electron. So, we have used x radiation sufficient enough for this and this electron uh, moving in towards this direction towards this direction in all directions. So, the electrons coming in all directions they will start hitting the atoms which are present and then you can see. So, the back scattering and this is uh, the kind of a phenomena. So, what do, you, what do you get? So, this is the scattering. So, therefore, you are looking at the scattering factor. So, if you take the scattering factor on the x axis and the y axis is the intensity of the uh, x ray absorption. So, the intensity is basically the amount of x radiation, the intensity of x radiation impinged in your material to the whatever is coming out. That ratio we basically use as the intensity ratio. So, you can see that their dampening. So, this is nothing but the oscillations. So, this is an oscillation based spectrum, and the x axis scattering factor, scattering factor is 1 by lambda so 1 by distance is a distance inverse thing and this depends upon the thermal vibrations also. So, therefore, if you measure the exhaust at a very low temperature you would get a sta kind of a stationary phase without the temperature being modulated on that. So, a lot of times people look at low temperature exhaust spectra uh, which will be uh, free from the, the, the thermal vibrations are reasonably free from that. Now, this directly is difficult to, to interpret for the interpretation for the distances etcetera uh, you can convert into the Fourier transform and get it and from these distances and you can try to fix the primary and secondary and from that with using the modal compounds you can fit the geometry of the uh, nearest neighbor ligands that are there. 
So, again as I said it can be from K edge, it can be from L edge, M edge etcetera depending upon the kind of it. So, the final step in this is that you always go for the Fourier transformation. I kindly look at the, uh, the slide and the Fourier transformation will give the distance relation with respect to the intensity of this. So, and that intensity ratio with respect to the modal compounds you can normalize or quantify. So, you can quantify and tell two such, three such, one such or whatever is there are, are present. Suppose, uh, so we, we see that the different number of ligands bound to that uh, metal center can also be obtained. The nature of it, it can be nitrogen, it can be oxygen, it can be sulfur that can also be because the electron scattering is dependent on the, the electron strength of that atom. Electron strength of that atom is dependent upon the uh, atomic number. So, oxygen having the more number of electrons than nitrogen and the sulfur having more number of electrons than the oxygen. So, these are all the greater the electron density, the greater the scattering power. So, therefore, you will have a different strength of these things. Okay. So, this is how one can uh, see that. So, you understand that this is the basically x-ray absorption as a function of energy on the x-axis and you can see xane spot, exhaust spot and then dampening things etcetera. So, I have explained to you. So, what is the x-ray absorption? What is the near edge? What is the dampening or oscillations? How these arise? Everything I have covered and this can be done for the particularly the higher atomic species uh, where the 1 s is, uh, is in the x-ray x -ray range. So, you can get you know just like even the way that we have looked at the XPS though the, the phenomena is the measurements are different the phenomena is the same where you are knocking out the MNS electron. Of course, there we have looked at even the bonding electrons uh, the, co, uh, the other kinds of things also we have looked at that. No, here we are looking at only the core electron could be uh, K at times L and M not too too far away from that. Uh, because if they are too far away from that uh, the, these, the measurements will not give the accuracy in that uh, this kind of things. Okay. So, I think that is where I have already covered the, whatever is the basic principle required for this. Now, I think we need to in order to understand this we need to go through some several or certain examples of this. So, I have uh, picked up the examples which are uh, suitable for inorganic or coordination compounds. I have been telling you the metal center and the nearest neighbors and sometimes even second nearest neighbors including number, type that means whether it is oxygen, carbon, nitrogen or sulfur etcetera as well as the their geometry and the connecting them all of these things can be obtained by multiple analysis, multiple spectra measure and then fitting these spectra with that of the, the modal compounds both the exhausts and xanes will help in establishing the primary and secondary coordination structures of the compounds or the metals or even non metals the primary coordinations and secondary coordination. Okay. So, having looked at this I think this uh, principal part is very clear and uh, you measure the x-ray absorption uh, which knocks the electron of uh, from the core level and then that electron gets uh, back scattered by the neighboring atoms and it could be multiple several atoms simultaneously happening. Therefore, you have some uh, the, the constructive destructive interference you have the multiple scattering interferences or multiple scattering effects. So, all of these are observed and as a result you have the, the ups and down uh, in the spectra of these oscillations that you are looking at. So, they have a huge amount of information in those up and down oscillatory uh, things. Okay. Now, let us look at one example. This is an example of the very old reaction maybe uh, close to a 100 years old reaction or more a Grignard uh, reaction. Okay. So, what are we uh, talking about Grignard? Where is this metal coming from? Yes, the Grignard reaction use the magnesium and then transfer this uh, R group and that is where using the magnesium halide. So, what is the kind of a species that is formed and, uh, and that for species that is formed in the reaction and I draw your attention to this particular slide uh, and that is being uh, drawn from uh, the solution you can take at the, the reaction mixture. The reaction mixture is that you have the alkyl magnesium bromide in this particular 
you know, ether, it is taken, and that's what you are using. Uh, this is di-n-butyl ether, and this forms before it does the, its reaction of the transferring the, the alkyl group, it forms an intermediate structure. So how is this structure being derived? This structure is now derived as of course we are looking at the examples are the exafs. So we have the data of the exafs, two types here. So one is the, the magnesium, other is the bromide, both are done. Uh, for the smaller atoms like ca carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, you will not get good. So that's why you do it for heavier atoms. So it is done for the magnesium and the bromine. So both uh, here probably the KH is done and these spectra are called the oscillation spectra and these oscillation spectra are drawn with respect to the K scattering factor, inverse of angstrom versus the intensity factor and you can see this. This is for the magnesium and this is from the for the bromine. So from this directly you cannot get any information straight. Of course, there are other things you can see multiple that is by the fitting kind of things. You fit and get the data out. But you can you also do transform this into the Fourier and get this distance related which is not shown in this paper but they have done. So they have the values and those values have been used for fitting this one. So using this by fitting with the with the modal compounds etc. You can get the, the independent mg mg and br br distances and these distances will allow you to calculate the, the, the total geometry, angles, etc. And then, of course, this is the bromo, and this is the, your magnesium, this is your alkyl group, and this is your the ether oxygen. This is ether oxygen. So, you can get all of them. The, so, the, the distances. So, as you see that when you are doing uh, a magnesium study, then the electrons come and go in this direction, go in this direction, go in this direction, all directions they will hit and then you will get the backscattering. And similarly for bromine, you get all of these backscattering. So from this data, you can get the, these uh, distances and the distances from uh, this to this here, the, the magnesium to the bromide, uh, etc. Then the magnesium to the alkyl, magnesium to the alcohol, uh, ether, oxygen, so all of these. And from these distances, you try to fit with the, with the, with the geometry then you can get these angles or so fitted and this also is being helped by the small molecular uh, systems. So uh, now, so this both the KH magnesium and bromine helped a lot in terms of fitting the, uh, fitting the data and getting the. So this is your intermediate species and which further goes and does the reaction. That is not a part of, uh, of our discussion here. We want to see what is there. So, so the exhaust is able to establish very accurately with very little error balls will, will be 0, 0.0 something a kind of an error balls that is very good. So because this you cannot do x-ray structure because it is a species uh, which is not crystallized into the things. So you can you because it is being used for the reaction. So you can only uh, uh, lower the temperature and then freeze it and look at it and that is what is done. Okay, Let us uh, look at uh, another example. Uh, where you are doing a titration. So, this is a titration which is done between mercury to salt and cysteine. So, you are adding mercury to and cysteine in different proportions in solution phase. Okay, of course, solution phase you always have parameters like concentration of these, pH of these, all of these are uh, important. The ligand concentration, the mercury concentration or the metal concentration. So, concentration ratio of these things and the pH, all of these are important. So, you can, so obviously, when you add uh, to the uh, a solution, uh, the mercury ions to the cysteine in this example case, you would have a different kinds of a species formed. And the species formed could be the with the mercury with the two cysteines bonded, uh, mercury with the three cysteines bonded, four cysteines bonded, etc., etc., all of these kinds of things. Now, I draw your attention to look at the spectrum which is shown on this particular slide and you can see have a separate uh, small modal compound as well as you can simulate for this one mercury with the cysteine 2, cysteine 3, cysteine 4 and then you try to merge them in certain ratios. So, if it matches, so you can try to fit with that. So, you have an experimental spectrum, you have a fitting spectrum. The fitting spectrum is a combination of these but whatever the combination you want to do that. Okay? In fact, those kind of things can help you 
in understanding the what are the species present, how much of the dicysteine, tricysteine, tetracysteine. Okay, see that this has been done and then fitting has been done with this uh, uh, exof uh, data with the mercury with cysteine at a concentration of mercury 0.083 and cysteine at a concentration of 0.334 molar. So, that is something like 1 is to 4. So, this is 0 0.08, 0 0.32, 1 is to 4. So, you can see 1 is to 4 ratio of the mercury to cysteine at pH 9.4 is slightly a basic condition because it should be deprotonated, it should bind. That is the reason why. That gives the spectra of only one, but this you are trying to fit with all this combination of all this. So, 14 percent of the dye cysteine, 40 percent of the tri cysteine, 46 percent of the tri, uh, for tetra because you are using a high concentration almost four equal. Suppose if you have used one equivalent between the mercury and cysteine, you would not have got these things. These th two things would have been very little 5, 10 percent, it would have been 80 percent or something like that you would have got. So, you can fit that. So, using that uh, the fitting pattern, you can try to combine your exponential with the fitting spectrum and then you can derive what concentration, how much, what ratio of the species are present. So, the exhausts you are seeing even simple titration kind of thing, mixing the metal with the ligand forms a complex not one, two different, three different or more than that and then they are in different proportions and these uh, species also differ uh, based on the concentrations that you used, solvent you used, pH you used all those things. So, you can study huge range of uh, studies, every reaction of the inorganic uh, metal with the ligand reactions can be studied by the exhausts, but we cannot go through all of them. So, I have given you one example of that. So, I still would take one more uh, lecture on this particular topic to cover a more and more examples, so that we understand well uh, this uh, phenomenon of exhausts and xenes. Thank you very much.